I'll try to keep this quick because this episode is long, uh, but I've cut out as much of the crap as I can, and there's just that much to it. Uh, rear Spars RV7 coming your way now. One of the first items of business is trimming uh, a pretty healthy chunk out of both of these. Um, I think it's for part commonality, but it's not needed for the RV7. So I'm gonna make a little template, uh, see if I can't trace it on all these parts, and then uh, it looks like most of it I can get off with the bandsaw and files. Next is deburring all of these parts, which with some of these thick ones can even start with the file by removing some of the tooling marks from the punch that created it. Uh, then a various amount of the wheel and the handpiece over there. You've seen it all before. I've got a bunch to do now.
Okay, so I have uh, doubler plates clamped and clecoed to the spar that I'm match drilling uh, to get all the holes to line up. There's one really oblong, weird hole where I've drilled some pilot holes, I hope, in the correct spot. And I'm going to try to open those up with the uni bit and just hope things magically fall into place. Uh, from there, I have uh, additional doublers, which you've seen me deburr and mess with and, and trim some pieces off. They're going to get similarly clecoed uh, to these spars um, with all, all of the holes match drilled and uh, then it all comes off and we get to figure out how to prime all these pieces. So this next bit was uh, real fun. Uh, I had to take the holes, the two or three holes that I created with the Unibit, connect them all, and then expand them so that the resulting hole matched the one pre-punched in the spar. Uh, to do that, I was using the handpiece. I started with a, a uh, sanding drum, and that wasn't working great. So then I went to uh, a burr which really didn't work great then I tried a ceramic deburring bit which clogged up and bounced around um, I then tried a sideways cutting drill bit um, which had no hopes of getting anywhere um, I was exhausted and frustrated I wound up putting back on the sanding drum and I went with a bit larger one and and gave that a second chance and I found that it actually worked quite well I went through two or three of them um, but once you get it going you get the right speed it offered more control, uh, it was a closer shape to what I needed, um, and, and the control is really the main part. Um, I was able to get the, the edges rounded out and get that to match without risking uh, going in and cutting into the spar itself. Uh, so if you're doing this part, highly recommend the sanding drum. It's still one of my favorite tools to date. I don't know why I love the thing. Um, there's something about going through and deburring the holes with this tool. Um, All the parts have been final deburred. We just got to clean and then prime. The one question is, how are we going to prime these long pieces and that? Really smooth. Um, the cleaning with the pre-coat, I get questions about that. It's super easy. Uh, I do wear gloves, but other than that, it's not a real harsh chemical. I like to, to put some plastic down on my table, as you've seen, and then hit one side. Um, I do it almost like you're uh, 
breading chicken strips or something. I have one messy hand, one clean hand. Um, and what I do is I, I take the scotch right, I scrub down really heavily one side over the other. I almost let the the stuff pile up on the table and kind of create this slurry down there just to keep the parts wet. Um, and then it gets wiped off with uh, just a clean paper towel. And then with the clean hand, I hit it uh, with the acetone. And so we'll cut the, the cleaner, the pre-coat off with the acetone, doing a final clean. I try to do one part at a time. Uh, that way there's only one part at a time that doesn't have a part number. Um, and then what I do is I keep a Sharpie handy and then I'll write the part number on. That scotch Brite also offers uh, a final deburring, which is really nice, and a final time to get your hands uh, on the piece to make sure that you didn't miss anything when deburring. I try to do uh, like parts, especially if we're doing paired parts. Um, I'll do the left, then the right. I'll try to always start with the left, then the right. It, it gives me uh, a way to make sure that I'm not transposing part numbers or accidentally getting a left and a right mixed up, especially if we're only cleaning one part at a time. Um, and I'll also only replace what's needed. So on the larger spars, you may have saw that uh, when building these things, I had inboard and outboard and up and down and all sorts of markings on there. I'm pretty familiar with those pieces now. And so when I'm replacing that, I only wrote the part number because I'm pretty confident that I'll know, uh, assuming I know which one's right and left, that I'll know which is up and down and left and right. The reason is you'll see that through the primer. And, and if it's a part that's not going to get final painted, there's a chance that you'll see all your notes written on there if you're looking through an access hatch or on the interior of the plane. So I'm trying to keep part numbers nondescript uh, at this stage. From there, everything goes into the primer booth. Um, this part's a little weird because I had to extend my primer shanty a little bit. The parts don't fit, so I had to cut that hole in there. Uh, and uh, hopefully I can do half at a time, both sides, and then go outside, flip it around. We'll see how all that works. Um, I also was weighing the mixture. That's just, I, I don't base my mixture on weight. I wanna be clear. Uh, those two things could be very well different densities. Uh, and a one-to-one -one I uh, have always treated as volume, which you should. Uh, I was just curious uh, to the weight of the mixture because I, I feel like one can's a little heavier than the other. And in my mind, I'm more always worried about using more than one of the other and getting to the bottom and, and not having enough or, or not having the mixture proper. So that was purely for curiosity. I don't mix based on weight. I was just trying to answer some of my own questions, um, which I didn't really answer. So I may try it a couple more times. So if that process had you uh, chuckling a little, you're not alone. That was not ideal, but hey, it worked. And what's the old saying? If it's stupid and it works, then it's not stupid. It's kind of how I felt during that whole thing. Parts are primed. Uh, not only that, they've cured for enough time for me to be comfortable working with them. Uh, I'm gonna clean up a little bit, get things set up, and then uh, we'll look at constructing these rear spars for each wing. So before just clamping these pieces into place and shooting rivets through, there's a number of rivets that need to be left out because other parts attached there. So not all of these will be filled with rivets immediately. 
Uh, my go-to is blue tape to tell me what not to touch. And the plans are pretty good at marking what not to touch. So I'm gonna mark all of these that we shouldn't put rivets in. Then I'll get things set up to put rivets where they should go. Okay, everything's taped. Uh, I even got some rivets in place. Here's to hoping I can hit all these with the squeezer. Quick note here in the interest of full disclosure, some of these rivets had to come out. I forgot to dimple that upper flange you see there, uh, which is impossible to dimple once those doublers are on. So be careful, make sure you set those dimples before setting those rivets. Chomp Chomp found a bottle. He's very excited about it. Well, there it is, uh, a right and a left spar. They are complete, or complete for now. Uh, there's still a lot more to go on here, but this is where we stop uh, for the time being and move on to the next step. What's the next step? Ribs. Uh, it is finally time to get started on the ribs, so give me a moment. I'm gonna pack this stuff up, and then we're gonna break them out. And these are the ribs, or the pieces of the ribs. Uh, 54 pieces in total, about. Uh, we have forward ribs and aft ribs. Together they would make one whole outline of the airfoil, uh, omitting the aileron or flap at the back. All of these need to have the flanges straightened. They need to be fluted or, or straightened because there's warping from the machining process. They all need to be deburred. And I imagine it's gonna be quite a lengthy and tedious process. So. That's where we're going to stop today. I'm going to get to work on these and hopefully soon here I'll have an update with these nearly complete. Thank you for watching my channel. Uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. Tell a friend and we'll catch you next time.